Guizhong, the god of dust. A goddess who ruled over the lost, once prosperous civilization in the Gueli Plains, among other gods such as Morax and Marcosius, or known as Galba. In-game books such as Records of the Gallant, as well as one of the weapons in the game Memory of Dust, tell the tragedy of a weak and frail goddess who possessed incredible knowledge, blessed to know all that is in the past, but cursed to be unable to know the future or change it. Today, we'll look into who Guizhong was, what she did, and what else about the game's lore we may learn from the tragic story she shared with her dear friends Morax and Marcosius. Before we begin though, if you enjoy Tevod's facts and wisdom, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. After the video is over, join us over in our community discord server, where we talk all about Genshin, including lore. Okay, with that said, let's open the Tevodtionary and see what's been uncovered. Guizhong was born before the Archon War more than 3,700 years ago, and she established her civilization in an unknown location, but likely in the southern part of Liyue below Mount Tianhang. Guizhong was a well-meaning and kind god, one who fully understood and sympathized with humans and was aware of their curiosity, yearning for intelligence, fragility, and mortality, as well as their fear of the unknown. Among other gods, she was fairly weak and frail, but she was very intelligent and possessed a lot of wisdom from different parts of the world, and even outside of it. Aware of her lack of physical strength, she knew she should form an alliance with Morax to complement his brawn with her brains. Upon meeting Morax for the first time in a seemingly endless plain of glazed lilies in full blossom, she offered him a stone dumbbell as a pledge that would mark their alliance and friendship. Later on, they went to found the Guili Assembly together. This civilization of theirs was a combination of Zhang Li's and Guizhong's names, and it means Plains of Returning and Departing. Texts in the Guili Assembly reference their bond. Guizhong was a very caring goddess, one who taught her people in the Guili Assembly how to remain wise and strong, how to tend to soils for agriculture, abide by a moral code, and introduce to them basic but vital principles a civilization should have in order to remain functional, productive, and prosperous. She wrote four commandments and she spread them throughout the Guili Plains. Four stone tablets which read out these four commandments can be found in-game. To unite in ambition is to be steadfast and immovable for all time. Wisdom is like water. It nourishes all those who receive it, and in it is a reflection of the truth. Fortify the bones that movement be supple when the time comes. Virtue grows tall like a tree. Though there will be shade, it will flourish forever. Having a natural attraction to knowledge and yearning to understand more about the world and its mysteries, Guizhong was also devoted to studying mechanics, and quite interestingly, also Conrian technology, namely ruin machines. In Luhua Pool, the domain named the Hidden Palace of Guizhang Formula is a domain created with the help of the Adepti, which served as a storage space and research area for these intricate and unknown pieces of technology to Guizhong. It is specifically mentioned in the domain description, this is the realm of clouds. Guizhong, its former ruler, acquired several ancient and evil artifacts during her research into mechanics. The Adepti created this realm to contain them. Naturally, from this, we can assume that Guizhong personally went on an expedition to get her hands on one of these specimens, although it is unclear if they were ruined machines which aimlessly wandered around Teyvat, or if they were ruined machines fresh out of a workshop or factory which created them in Conria. Since Guizhong was interested in fairly well versed in Conrian technology, it's a possibility that she had some sort of direct relations with Conria, or at least a means of traveling to that place. Considering the time frame of over 3700 years ago, when Conria wasn't under a lot of pressure from the Cataclysm, it was probably still a peaceful and thriving civilization. She was also a bright inventor, and one of her handiwork is the Guizhong Ballista on Mount Tianhong. Built with the help of the Adepti as an autonomous weapon that would keep monsters and evil creatures away from their territory. There are not many details or stories which speak of Guili Plains before the Archon War. All we know is its brief history and its impressive size and prosperity, spanning all the way across to the Stone Gate in the north, Mingyuin Village in the east, Juying Karst in the west, and Liyue Harbor in the south. The inhabitants knew no hunger, for the stove god assured warm meals in every home. They were all bound together with the four commandments taught to them by Guizhong, 
everyone cooperated with each other, living in solidarity, giving birth to a comfortable, welcoming, and thriving civilization. We do not know for how long this civilization existed, but given its impressive size and grandeur, one can safely assume it lasted for a long time. Until somewhere around 3700 years ago, when the whole area was hit by a great flood, caused by a strange event during the Archon War, which also led to Guizhong's passing. Afterwards, the people from the settlement moved south, and founded what now is known as Liwei Harbor. For some insights on what the strange event during the Archon War might have been, it's important to mention the way in which the chasm, Dunyu ruins, and other areas around these two places were formed. Around 6,000 years ago, a strange meteor fell from the heavens I will have order and landed in the chasm. This meteor had a proud and agitated temper which is a very strange attribute to give to a meteor, an object without conscience or life. And we also do not know what proud and agitated temper may refer to, but we can assume it was probably quite destructive. During an unknown time in the Archon War, great strife caused the meteor to somehow leap back into the heavens, and the indentation it made onto the land became what now is known as the chasm. Dunyu Ruins was also formed from a fragment of the same meteor. I believe the meteor jumping back into the heavens is the phenomenon which caused the Great Flood to devastate Guili Assembly and everything else in its path, as well as the cause for Guizhong's death. The reason behind the meteor's appearance is unknown, and there aren't many hints as to why it crashed down into the earth, and even less so, the reason or the means by which it flew back up to its original place. These series of events is what led to Marcosius' sacrifice of their strength, size, and knowledge to quell the calamity and assure the safety of the people he had so much love for. To wrap up this video about Guizhong and Guili Assembly, I think it's only adequate if we end on the story told by the in-game weapon, the Memory of Dust, the stone dumbbell which marks the friendship between the two gods. As I've mentioned in the beginning of the video, Guizhong offered Morax a stone dumbbell as a pledge for their alliance and friendship. The coincidence of meeting Morax in a field covered in glaze lilies in full bloom and walking the same path for different reasons is what gave fruits to the Guili Assembly and a beautiful story which unfortunately has a fairly sad ending. Guizhong, despite being always being solemn and well composed, offered the stone dumbbell to Morax as both a pledge and a challenge to him, with excitement and a smile on her face which was beyond uncharacteristic for her. This puzzle offered to him would unveil all of Guizhong's knowledge once it would be opened. There was no contract between them, they only just so happened to walk the same path. But Zhang Li remembers the scene of their first meeting anyway, in the ever so unchanging field of glaze lilies in full bloom. Those little people are as small and fragile as dust. Because they are so small, they know not when they will lose their lives to disaster or strife, and so they are afraid. Because they are afraid, they try so hard to become more intelligent. This I understand. With your brawn and my brains, this city would surely become a great one. Her final smile was a lonely one, even as her form dissolved into the finest dust. It seems that our journey together has come to an end. As for that stone dumbbell, forget about it, would you? This is the mark of our pledge, and it is also my challenge to you. All my wisdom is hidden within this stone dumbbell if you can unlock it. Many years passed, and he was never able to unlock that dumbbell, nor would he ever learn what might have followed that sentence. Over the years, the wild glaze lilies too dwindled till at last they were no more. Having lost a very dear friend to him, Morax moved the remaining of people of Guili Assembly down south, away from dangers, and founded Liyue Harbor. Grieving the loss of Guizhong, he creates a contract promising to protect the people of Liyue to protect the people of a civilization he nurtured with two companions, one of whom was a fraction of who they used to be, and another who tragically passed away, leaving behind an enigma which remains unsolved even today. An enigma which, once decoded, can unleash great knowledge into the world if the beholder wishes to share it. 
And that pretty much wraps up Guizhong and the life she lived, surrounded by people who loved her as the kind and pure goddess she was, and her friends who helped her lay the foundations of a once prosperous civilization. What did you guys think of her story? Be sure to let me know down in the comments. I'm really looking forward to the release of The Chasm, because I'm sure we'll be able to learn a bit more about Guizhong, and especially about the strange meteor which probably caused the great floods in Guili Plains, as well as Guizhong death. What do you all think about as well? Let me know your thoughts and speculation down below about the chasm. I'm really interested in hearing about what you guys have to say about it. With that said though, I'm gonna wrap this up. Thanks for opening the Teyvatchnary, and I will see you in the future for more Genshin Impact content and lore.